So today, well tomorrow, is gonna change Bill Tune Race forever. So I'm headed over to pick up my dad right now. We're gonna head down to Dallas, Fort Worth, and by the thumbnail and title of this video, you probably already know, we're headed to get a dyno. I know a lot of you that watch this channel enjoy the tuning and tips and tricks of kind of me tuning and working on the cars and everything else. I know a lot of you have wanted more tuning videos, but it's extremely hard for me to tune somebody's car on the street like I've been doing some cars and show that it's it's not the best to go out and you know do wide open throttle pulls on a public road, uh, which I never did. But with this, I'll be able to do a lot more tuning in depth and take the time to show you guys in video form how to tune. Uh, like I've said before, I'm not some major professional tuner. I've been doing this a few years. What I've done has worked pretty well. So I'd like to share that with you guys and this will help to do that. So let's get on the road. Got the open trailer in tow. Put some new tires on it to hopefully make this trip nice and easy. So I had the option of them sending me the dyno, but I want to go down, take video of it, check out the facility, and also they offer a training class that you get to take when purchasing a dyno to help you learn how to operate it. Make a quick stop. For the OGs on the channel, one of my first videos, this is uh, kind of tradition, got to get some donuts before we hit the road. After about 11 hours of driving, we made it. So we're down here, empty trailer, and tomorrow, hopefully we've got something on it. Grab some food, just hang out here for the night. Good morning from Fort Worth, Texas. We are down here to pick up a dyno today. So we're gonna head over to Dynocom right now. I purchased the dyno a few months ago and they've built it and it's ready to go and we're also getting training today. Uh, there should be some other people there that are getting training for their dynos that they've either picked up or are getting soon. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do this, go over there, check out their facility and get some training today. We made it. Looks like some more people made it to pick up their dinos as well. So we're gonna head in. So we just got done with class, did all the classroom stuff, learned all the uh, workings of the software and handheld unit. And now we're out in the shop getting ready to get some demonstrations on an actual dyno. We gotta hop in and learn some of it, and use the uh, pendant and do all that. So when we get home, kinda know what we're doing, but it's still gonna be a lot of learning to do. So here's their dyno setup. They have an oil drive over there, a two-wheel drive here. We got a little test mule for the Toyota. So we're gonna have this running. We're gonna hop in and learn some stuff on it. So this is what we're gonna use to learn how to work some of it. And then we get a load up and head out. I actually have my dyno sitting right here with a bunch of the other ones. So they're right here. All the Hub dynos are right here. Mine's actually the ones in the very back. Here's my dynos right here, the uh, 3500 hubs. So we'll get these loaded up. Got all the electronics and handheld and everything here. But this is what I got. And uh, it's gonna be pretty exciting. So they're not huge. They do have some wheels on them. So they're semi-portable since I do not have a shop to actually mount a big roller dyno. I wanted to go with the hubs because they are semi-portable. I figure I'll come up with like a trailer to pull these in and out of and be able to move them around. Um, to different shops or whatever I need to do or future expand and do all that type of stuff So they'll kind of grow with me at their machine shop This is pretty cool a big old roll up here on this lathe if you guys are into lathe or machining You know, that's a big chunk of material. They have a couple uh, CNC machines over here. This is pretty cool So another lathe and then a few CNC machines for machining like adapters and hubs for the dyno all that is look how big that thing is so Pretty cool machine shop that they have here to uh, manufacture it all right here. And the bit number used to come vehicles are either BL85, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it'll be fine, yeah. that's right. And then you click any other, you just, oh, yeah, no, that fills it in. Okay. The reason why there's a lot of blanks is because people didn't put anything in there. Oh. So now go do run, okay. roll on, go to the next. And for a second here, hit that to uh, done. Like Dave, you, take a picture of that screen. That's how your 90% of your tests are going to be. Literally, probably 99%. All right? Now, for you, 99% of your runs are going to be interpolated. And both of those checked. Now, you're going to leave it at that range just okay. because I want you to. But for you, do whatever horsepower yeah. your vehicle is. Now, everyone with the hub dyno needs to take a picture of that screen. All right, so that's you do set up just like that. Okay. Go next. Leave it on gear ratio. Okay. Dave, I want you to take a picture of next. 
Oh, that's three. It's just a gear ratio. Oh, three and that six. is where you put the ratio. For you, put 3.6. For you guys, the hub dinos, you pretty much are going to be focused on using gear ratio. Yeah. All right. All right. Next. All right. And finish. And you know, I pass this up. And after this one, I'm going to jump you in. You're the lucky, well, let's not say sucker. That's right. You're the lucky <laughs> guinea pig that's going to do something that nobody else did in the class. Pop in. I'm going to create a new session here, all right? I'm going to say uh, hub dino ramp test. Uh, of course, it's not just for a hub dino, it could be for any dino. So you've seen all that before. So what you guys haven't seen is this. I go PAU ramp. Now, here you can enter a starting speed and an end speed. I don't want to do that. It's a waste of time. I always want to set up like this, all right? And I enter a number here, all right? This, it says velocity over seconds, because if this is imperial units, that means mile per hour per second. And I'm already, I'm going to say this, and you guys just have to remember it. Uh, Mustang, uh, brand new Mustang GT that has 420 horsepower, a ramp rate that leaves the factory is going to be about 15 miles per hour per second, all right? For a Bugatti that has a thousand horsepower, it's going to be about 30. For a 2,000 horsepower vehicle, it's going to be like 50 or 60. Just, you, so you kind of have to just know these things. So I enter 15 in there, all right? And then I go next. And I want gear ratio, just because I'm telling you that's what you guys should use. That is three sits, I go fit next. It's hard, you're going to see this right now. That's why I'm going to leave it at five seconds. And I go fit it. Now I'm going to tell you what it's going to do. You got to do exactly what I say. Don't. You won't be able to do exactly what I say, but try. So when you're in fourth gear, we did gear ratios, so you don't have to start at certain RPM or anything. But we're going to say around 2,000. You press the go button. Gradually put the foot within its bad. You have three seconds to do this within. That's a long time, by the way. One, two, three. Within three seconds, you're going to take your foot from wherever it is. You don't do it instantaneously, it's not a race. Gradually go to full throttle, all right? So press the go button in fourth gear. When you do that, then take the pedal and gradually go to full throttle and hold it there, all right? Everything else would then do, the system will take care of it, all right? one more test after this that you, Amy and you guys will want to watch. We're going to do a VRS. But that graph, that's torque. All right, you're using a, a, a ramp test. Well, the problem with the ramp test at the very beginning, it, it, every hub dyno, every dyno in the world does this. It locks in, it turns the eddy brake on drastically hard. It's just like jumping on a weigh scale. And when you jump on a weigh scale, the tick's going to go up. Imagine it's an analog with a needle, and then it will go down. So I go new run. And I go VRS, all right? And over here, it automatically picked the coefficients because the, in the database. So there's the coefficient. You don't have to use the coefficients. You can use the frontal area, the coefficient of drag, um, the rolling resistance, and the incline. You can do that. Some vehicles, they don't have A, B, and C. And I'm going to go next. We'll do gear ratio. And OK, all you're going to do is just like every other run, Get in fourth gear, press go. Then we'll hold right into it. it. It won't hold you at the beginning. It's gonna the, only the ramp the ramp does that because the ramp needs to lock in the VRS. It's gonna go. It shouldn't be much won't feel much different than some of the other runs.
That's what it should do. And you didn't even go to Max Red Line yet, did you? It was right. Yeah, right. Yeah. The only, but I urge you guys with the hub dining, your very first vehicle that you put on there. Well, once we got done with training and loaded up, we headed back to Colorado. It is now 1.30 in the morning. We're about an hour and a half away from home. The dyno pods are back here riding along just fine. But uh, yeah, so only about another hour and a half to finish this trip out, get home, filling up the old Gasco Guzzler. Uh, truck doesn't do too bad pulling everything, but it does not do well on gas, that is for sure. And there it is, 3.21 in the morning. Home with the dinos. Gonna get inside, sleep for a little bit, and then get these things unloaded. The journey to go get the pods is almost over. We're gonna head over to my dad's. He's got a forklift to help unload these. And then uh, I wanna end up getting a trailer that I can put these in and out of. I don't know if it's gonna be best to roll them into it or maybe come up with a little crane system to pick them up and uh, move them in and out of a trailer like that. But I'll figure it out. That's all still part of the thing. I kind of needed to get them, get my hands on them, see what mounting's on them and see kind of how they work, how well they roll and do all of that so I can kind of plan from here. So we're gonna head on over there and get these unloaded. Well, they are uh, semi-portable. They're not light, but this was the whole key in getting a hub dyno that's semi-portable so you can move them around the shop or in and out of the shop if you have to. There they are. In the next video, we'll be going over some of the hardware and accessories I got with the machine. And then hopefully we'll end up setting these up for the first time. Probably gonna end up using the Mazda as the test meal for these. Uh, we might set them up over here at my dad's shop the first time just to try to learn them, get comfortable with setting it up, kind of learning the things that need to be done with it. We got to get some power wires to wire it up as well and all of that. In the next video, I'll also go over some of the features on why I chose the hub dyno, uh, how much horsepower they can hold and all of that. Some of it will be also learning what I can do with them. So we'll... Uh, just be a big learning experience from here on and something definitely needed to step up and do a dyno i tuned multiple cars last year on the street and it's just not the safest thing so i felt it was time to get a set of dynos uh went with the hub for portability and all of that so if you guys would like more dyno content and follow me along as i learn how to use these things hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video